Hello and welcome to the video. I'm Machine Dana and in this video I'm going to be talking all about Streamlabs OBS and how you can optimize your PC and software for the benefit of your stream and running Streamlabs OBS. This is the third video in a four-part series of videos which discusses how to get the most of optimizing the whole experience for you as the broadcaster, your PC, Streamlabs OBS and of course the most important people, your viewers, if you have any. <laughs> So I did want to do one big long video with all of these different things in it, but I realized actually it's better off chunked into the four different videos. The first video was all about Streamlabs OBS itself and the specific settings within Streamlabs OBS linked in the description. The second video was all about what you can do whilst you are live, the different things you can do to streamline things specifically whilst you're broadcasting or planning that you can do before you broadcast. The fourth video is all about game specific settings that you can change that will optimize the gaming experience if all of the first three videos have not worked for you. So in this video, I'm going to be going through a number of different tips, how you can run your PC better, software tips, different things you can just try if you're experiencing issues with Streamlabs OBS. This also applies to OBS Studio and other streaming software. Because a lot of this stuff is quite general stuff. So if you don't use Streamlabs OBS here, this will probably work for you as well. Although I use Streamlabs OBS, so the examples I'll give will be Streamlabs OBS specific. I'm saying Streamlabs OBS a lot here, aren't I? <laughs> A lot of people make the mistake of thinking, oh, I can't get my settings right within Streamlabs. Uh, so the issue must be Streamlabs. A lot of the time, actually, the issue is a number of other things that it can be, not just the software. It's a broader picture. And that's what this whole video series is all about, educating people a little bit. I just want to say as well, at the moment, I'm not sponsored by Streamlabs OBS. Maybe one day they'll sponsor me. Who knows? If they don't, maybe I'll dump the software like a heavy stone in a light water in the ocean, in a, in a pond. It, um... How have they not offered me a sponsorship yet? I've done so many videos about Streamlabs OBS. Oh my God. Come on, Logitech. As always, if you find it useful, feel free to thumbs up the video. I'd very much appreciate it and it does help me, uh, but it also helps other people find this video when they're searching for the same things you search for. Feel free to subscribe to my channel. Finally, if you want to check me out on Twitch, feel free to at twitch.tv forward slash machine Dana. Let's go. Okay, so we're going to jump straight into this. This is all about how you can change things on your PC, software and hardware related stuff to free up essentially resources for Streamlabs OBS to run better. So the first thing is to go into uh, game mode. Do a search on Windows. It's only applicable to Windows. If you're a Mac user, then <laughs> why are you even streaming on Mac? It's a joke of a... Why are you even paying three times the amount of money to get a piece of hardware that... monopolizes your data. Let's click on game mode settings here. You can search for it in the bar. So I just want to search for exactly what game mode is. It's a feature in Windows 10 in lower end machines, or if you'd like to do a lot of multitasking, it will help you because it helps to prioritize essentially the processes towards the gaming experience when you are gaming. If you're a game focused streamer, which probably most of you will be, you will definitely find this useful. This doesn't make a huge difference, but it does make a slight difference. You can just toggle it on there. And I want to talk a little bit about monitor resolutions and also multi multitasking monitors now i've got three different screens running one's for chat and it's located just right next to the camera there one is for other applications such as streamlabs obs or discord or whatever um spotify that kind of thing and then of course i've got my main gaming screen here that's my particular setup however i know that the chat refresh rate doesn't need to be very high because it's just chat and all i need to do is read chat so i've optimized this particular chat monitor to be at the lowest refresh rate which means it's using up the lowest amount of resources possible because it's simply only only use for chat now that suits me it may not suit you but it's worth thinking about these things for me the only screen i need frames on and a good frame rate is anything that i'm gaming on and particularly when i'm doing fps games even strategy games you don't really need to have a high refresh rate although obviously it can enhance the gaming experience massively but if you have got multiple screens i would recommend only your primary screen having the high refresh rate and the other monitors you can choose to reduce the refresh rate on and also the resolution now i wouldn't recommend doing this if you don't need to this is only a situation where if you find that you're struggling and your hardware is not quite up to scratch or perhaps you're just trying to get little gains here and there one of the easy gains you can get is to reduce the resolution on your monitor and of course the refresh rate on your monitors that are not being used that brings me to the next point that if you are experiencing really bad issues with your primary monitor that is also a worst case scenario thing that you can do you can right click on your desktop 
click on display settings but i've gone into the specific monitor settings using the buttons on the monitors to reduce the frame rate on each of the monitors individually you can change display resolution by scrolling down here my kids have got the 4k on my primary monitor but if i was experiencing any significant issues as a last resort i could reduce the resolution on my primary monitor say for instance to uh, 19 20 10 80 and that would free up extra resources if needed you can click into graphics settings and you can hardware accelerate GPU scheduling. If you're using an NVENC setting on your GPU to do the encoding process for your stream, I would strongly not recommend having hardware accelerated GPU scheduling on. I would turn that off because that is taking load away from your graphics card that can then be used to process the frames before uploading and encoding up to Twitch or YouTube gaming. You've got NVIDIA's control panel here. You can open that up or do a search for it. But rather than going onto your monitors, you can also go into the configuration settings for your monitors within NVIDIA. So here within display and change resolution, you're able to change the uh, the actual resolution of the monitor rather than using the Windows version of doing the same and also the refresh rate here. So for my 27 inch 4K primary gaming monitor, I've got it set to 144 Hertz. But as you can see for this secondary ultra wide monitor, which, which is running separate applications, I'm still running a pretty high resolution the native resolution of the monitor but it's not actually necessary for me to do that i could easily reduce that if i wanted to if i was experiencing pc issues but what i have done is i've reduced it from 100 hertz down to 60 just to reduce the refresh rate and the load on the pc and finally for the chat panel one i've set that to the i actually could set that here to the minimum refresh rate and if necessary change the resolution of that as well a very quick thing you can do here it's just a bit of a quick win really but a lot of people have a lot of processes running in their tray here and these are kind of background processes that are running that might just take up micro pieces of your pc's performance go on your task manager go on to start up here what you can do here is just click on the status to sort by the enabled and disabled go through the enabled and check which of these applications you can just not have start up when your pc starts up for instance like i don't know voice mod do i need voice mod starting up every single time i turn on my pc probably not actually that would be pretty fun that's a bad example. OneNote. Do I need to have my notes up every single time? I don't even use OneNote. Why would I want that? Of course, it's going to be disabled. However, that said, you can also review your disabled ones for any that are quite important. And all you simply do is right click and enable if it's disabled or right click and disable if it's enabled. It should show here the startup impact that it has. The wider issue here isn't so much the startup impact, okay? Yes, it's going to have an impact on how quickly your PC boots up, but that's not what this video is about. This video is about how many applications are running to enable the core application which is Streamlabs OBS and your games to run better and if you've got a load of crappy applications that are not being used running in the background because you've allowed it to start up when you started up your PC then of course they're all going to be fighting for the PC resources and by the way still on the control alt delete task manager here within your processes that if there are any applications that you're not needing to use for example word here i could choose to just kill that it's only really worthwhile doing this if you're experiencing ad hoc issues i wouldn't recommend doing this at the start of every single session that you have right i'm going to kill a load of applications unless you've got a really low end pc and you're looking for very quick wins however if your pc is struggling at any given moment it's worthwhile opening up task manager and just having a look at what applications are running and which processes or applications you can kill off this now brings me to the next point as as well if you're running chrome tabs or any other browser tabs that are not being used that is definitely going to affect the performance of streamlabs obs and your overall pc performance as well this is less relevant if you've got a medium to high-end hardware me personally it doesn't make a big difference on my hardware setup but if you've got 20 chrome tabs open and you're running like a potato pc like you're an idiot okay close the tabs just close the tabs and give your viewers like a breath of fresh air okay come on like priorities <laughs> And just to put this into perspective in terms of the actual usage that you get from this, the Chrome tabs here, I've got something like five or six tabs open. The overall usage that these are applying as a whole is 35% memory and 0.34% of CPU. It's very low power usage and relatively low network usage, but this could be quite important in conjunction with your bitrate. If you find that Google Chrome or Internet Explorer, if you're using Internet Explorer now, in 2021, I can't help you. Okay, I, I can't help you. Switch off the video. <laughs> But you get the picture here. We can right click and end task for any Chrome tabs that we have or just individually close down tabs that you're not using. 
brings me to another point as well. If you're running Streamlabs OBS and also Stream Manager for Twitch, you don't need to be running both of those things. Everything that runs within Stream Manager, virtually everything is contained within Streamlabs OBS, the key information that you need. So if you're finding that your PC is struggling with all the different processing applications, you can possibly try simply closing Stream Manager on Twitch, which means you can close Chrome altogether and just use a chat panel within Streamlabs OBS or OBS Studio or whatever streaming software that you use. It seems kind of obvious, but when you've got a million and one different things going on at the same time, and of course you're entertaining your viewers and so on, you may not necessarily think that the experience for the viewer is reduced because you've got so many other applications open. Brings me on to the next point, which is any applications that you are not using that are currently open, just simply kill them. You know, Excel, uh, you've been filing your accounts because, you know, your accounts are due. Uh, you, you know, you don't need to file your accounts while you're streaming, okay? Just save the save the accounts, put them in the bin. You don't need to file accounts anyway. Just just avoid tax. Don't avoid tax. But I didn't say that. Please don't avoid your taxes. File your accounts. Just file them not while you're streaming, okay? That's the that's the basic premise here. <sighs> Why am I even having to say this? Okay. Porn tabs. You don't need them, right? Pictures of your little doggy and kitty. You don't need to have them open unless you're showing your stream, of course. Like shopping for some kinky underwear. For your wife okay just do it after the stream don't do it while you're streaming so there you have it hopefully i've given you some idea on extra things you can do to improve the performance of your pc with the objective of stabilizing your stream and providing a great experience for your viewers and your broadcast remember streaming is not just about how you optimize your streamlabs settings or your your obs studio settings or whatever it's about the whole picture you may have the perfect software settings but be killing your pc with a number of other different things here and that brings me to the final point which is check out the other three videos in the link in the description below like subscribe see you later